Thank you, Linda, for having us. And uh, also for the fact that uh, great work the Linda Farm Network does in educating farmers and the public in general on farm issues, which are vitally important to the state of Minnesota. I have with me today a young farmer from Carver County, Carl Olson. He's also a volunteer on the local fire department. And also with me is Caitlin Bemis. She's a lobbyist for the Farm Bureau down here at the Capitol, which, by the way, is desperately needed for a voice for farmers down here. So let's start with the governor's budget. Number one, the governor budget has not been passed yet, so you have time to participate in this. But his budget actually spends all the surplus, and it increases the general fund spending in the state by about 25 to 30 percent in two years. And to put that in some perspective, between 2010 and 2022, the governor's budget went up, or the general fund budget went up about uh, 55 percent, okay, over 12 years. Here, we're going to increase state spending 25 to almost 30 percent within two years. And on top of the you know, almost $19 billion surplus, the governor's budget wants to raise taxes another $2.9 billion on top of that. And we're already a high-tax state. There's been an estimate done. He wants to add 2,000, almost 2,350 full-time employees down here at the state capitol. My question to the public and to the farming community, is your income in the private sector going up 25 to 30 percent, because ultimately the private sector has to pay for this increase. So uh, I think it's going to have a very crushing and devastating effect, especially on rural Minnesota. And we desperately need your participation to bring some reasonableness to this uh, process. And I understand, too, agriculture, the ag sector in this budget is very, the funding is very, very small. Yeah, that's correct. It actually, uh, we just saw some of the targets came out as far as the committees, and actually uh, it was reduced about $25 million, according to the information I have, compared to the last biennium. So even though farming is one of the major industries in our state and a stabilizer for us, uh, the governor's budget seems to re, uh, or the target set by the DFL and the governor, governor seems to uh, reduce the importance of farming. Uh, with that, there's a number of bills in the uh, governor's budget that we'd like to discuss. The first would be sick and paid family leave. And this is a bill that has not yet passed, but it certainly has a lot of impetus and support from the governor and the DFL. It basically would require down to one employee, even farmers, to keep track of every 30 hours to give an additional hour of paid family leave for a number of reasons. There's 12, 12, weeks, 12 weeks and 12 weeks. So an employee could take off a total of 36 weeks, and you'd have to have them have their uh, job back if they return. This is going to have a uh, severe impact, especially on uh, seasonal workers or farm employees who sometimes work uh, more in one time of the year than another. With that, I would like to have Carl Olson, the young farmer, have with me comment on the impact of the paid and family leave. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, inviting me here. I just want to talk about how it would impact our dairy farm up in Carver County. Uh, we're a small farm that runs about 140 cows. Um, for We already have a labor shortage, um, and uh, I think this is going to make it uh, worse by far. We're having a hard enough time finding help on the farm the way it is. And two, it even, uh, even if you can find employees, is tough. Um, so I, uh, I want to bring up our co-op struggle just to show you what, what's happening. Right now in the state of Minnesota, uh, last month there's been some struggles trying to get milk processed, and it wasn't because we didn't have the processing plants. It was employee sh shortage. So I belong to First District uh, Association up in Litchfield. We've been blessed to keep our plant up and running, but there's been some other neighboring co-ops that have been having trouble. 
uh, doing the night shift with uh, employees. And this is just going to make it on rural America. And it's, and it's not just farming, too. It's uh, small businesses, our home businesses. And that's even including in the Twin City area. Uh, any small business that's going to really put a damper on it, and uh, it could be very detrimental to our small businesses. Well, thanks for those comments, uh, Carl. And, you know, this is going to affect your schools and your uh, county and uh, city governments, and they're all going to need additional tax increases. Uh, the, uh, it will also need uh, over a billion-dollar tax increase to get started. Now, again, the Republicans have an alternative. It provides tax credits to business to businesses to incentivize them to provide paid and family leave. But unfortunately, the governor and the Democrats want to do a one-size-fits-all regardless of the consequences. So, again, this bill has not passed. We really need your help down here at the Capitol to the governor and also to the Democratic uh, senators and House members because – in the Senate, they only have a one-vote majority, so things can change with your help. Uh, the next bill we'd like to talk about is the SF4. This bill has actually passed and been signed into law. It's the Green New Deal here in Minnesota, and it calls for 100% alternative energy, solar and wind, uh, by 2040. We, I'm on the Energy Committee. We've had testimony <clears throat> from co-ops that this simply is impossible technology-wise, and even the DFL admits it, but they pass it anyway. They exclude nuclear, hydro, uh, clean coal, just about anything that would provide base load electricity. The Star Tribune had a front-page article that said this is going to cost billions of dollars, which other uh, reputable organizations also say, so the electricity costs are going to jump uh, dramatically, and it's going to create rolling blackouts at about the worst time when we have severe weather, either cold or hot, here in the state of Minnesota. So, again, Carl, uh, what do you see this as having an impact on farming in, uh, farming operations here in the state? Uh, for one, what I see on our farm up in Carver, uh, the higher electric, electric, electric costs, um, it's already increasing. Uh, they keep putting these mandates in to force these businesses to do it. They have to push the cost on to somebody, and it's going to come right to the farmer's back. Um, and back to the thing, small business. It will come to our back. Uh, the thing that scares me the most is uh, food safety. Uh, we take great care of our cattle. If we don't have a reliable source of electricity in the summertime, Fans are going to be shutting off. Water is going to be shutting down. We're going to be pulling tractors out to run generators uh, that are burning off a of diesel, and uh, that's okay with me. But it's it's just a lot of added stress to the farmer. Harvest time, you're going to see dryers having struggles with high demand electricity, uh, dryer bins. It's just the list goes on and on. We need a reliable source. We have it. And let's continue down the, yes, we want our environment clean, but we have the alternatives already here, like nuclear, to keep things progressing for the state of Minnesota. Okay, thanks for those comments, Carl. And the, um, you know, the Republicans did have an alternative that was all of the above, nuclear, hydro, everything else that we offered. Again, the Democrats rejected it. They want to go with non load electricity, which is going to cause higher costs, unreliability, and uh, when we have to clean these things up, uh, wind and windmills and solar, it's going to be an, uh, an environmental disaster, in my opinion. So, again, we need to add some things to that bill. It has passed, but the Democrats and governor needs to hear from you. Uh, the next item that we'd like to talk about is electric cars. As most of you know, the governor signed an executive order tying Minnesota to a California unelected board to uh, set our mission standards. So uh, 
We just recently had a lawsuit. The soybean growers and gas stations have filed a lawsuit against this executive order. Again, the governor bypassed the legislative session. Or, 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 uh, session. He didn't run the, the requirement through the House or the Senate. He just did it directly himself. And the consequences of this are going to be grave. In fact, the soybean uh, growers, they add over $1.7 billion to the state's economy, and they provide over 5,000 jobs here in the state of Minnesota. But yet the governor ignores this and ties uh, Minnesota to an unelected board in California. Would you like to comment on this, Caitlin? Caitlin? Yeah, thank you, Senator. I think the biggest thing for Minnesota Farm Bureau is just stressing the importance of biofuels and ethanol blended fuel. I think, you know, that's that's the biggest way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions today. Uh, we have the infrastructure here now. It supports our Minnesota farmers, decreases the reliance on foreign countries, um, and overall it's better for the environment. So, you know, that's what we have for today is, is unleaded 88 and even higher blended ethanol fuels. Um, but yeah, anything that we can do to support these farmers, um, you know, clean cars can come down the road, but what we hear, what we have here now is ethanol and ethanol blended fuel. Well, thank you, Caitlin. Yeah. So again, this needs to be challenged here in the state of Minnesota in the legislature, but we can't get it done unless we have public pressure. So we need you to get involved because of the, the direction the governor and Democrats want to take us. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about, there's several other bills that have great concern, but one of the ones we want to talk about for farming is the, uh, the Democrats support, uh, the MP, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency to overregulate corn seeds in our state. Now, the e- federal EPA already regulates this, but, uh, the governor and the Democrats want to add even more regulation on top of what the, the feds already do. And uh, we want, uh, I would like Carl to comment on that impact here in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, thank you, Senator. Uh, how this really affects the farmers, we, we, we truly need to get involved on this one big time, like the rest of the issues here. The seed treatment is vital for making a good crop, a safe crop for our, our farm. And uh, uh, I don't think they're what they're understanding here is you take that seed treatment away, we're going to be spraying a lot more to con- try to control the pesticides uh, because we need to produce that safe crop for the people. And uh, just it can't stress enough to get involved and call down to your local representative to help. Okay, Caitlin, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, thanks, Senator. And I just echo what Carl has to say. I think the biggest thing is um, the author of this bill thinks that farmers are uh, disposing of this treated seed improperly, that it's being dumped all over the ground and it's getting into our water and deer are coming up and eating it. And I think what this representative fails to understand is that this treated seed is very expensive. Farmers are very uh, responsible with the treated seed that they do buy, and it costs a lot of money. So farmers aren't buying excessive treated seed to just dump all over the ground. Right. I think you can see this is a critical issue, and again, this has not passed, but the Democrats and it appears Governor Waltz are supporting it. Please get involved. I could go on uh, with the gun bills. They want to, it seems like the Democrats and governors support putting uh, violent criminals back out onto the street that even do gun violence, and yet now they have four or five bills that want to restrict their Second Amendment rights. So they want to take away and restrict the Second Amendment rights of legal citizens, and yet they turn around and support criminals that do gun violence right back out on the street. We've even seen minor children in the Minneapolis uh, get killed by stray bullets. Please get involved. These, these bills have not yet passed, but they are being moved by the Democratic Party. Um, with that, uh, I think I want to thank uh, Caitlin Be- Bemis and Carl Olson for being part of this, and especially Linda and the Linder Farm Network for giving up an opportunity to educate the public. Thanks and God bless.